35 years ago yesterday, Cleve and I hosted the first volunteer meeting for the quilt. Six people came, including Gert, who brought two panels she'd already made. Our mission was to take an idea and make it a reality. We were going to drag our dead to Washington and lay them out on America's front yard until attention would be paid. We succeeded that fall when nearly 2,000 quilt panels were laid out on the mall. What we never expected was that nearly half of those panels came from mothers from every state. Mothers too afraid to tell their church groups what their sons had died of. Mothers so alone in their grief and desperate for connections that they sewed be so beautiful quilt panels for their dead sons and then mailed them off to a bunch of gay men in San Francisco they didn't even know. The threads that are woven into each panel carry thousands of unique stories of grief, love, and hope. This is what makes the quilt so special. It's why being in its presence has such a powerful impact. Today, 35 years later, the quilt continues to play an important role in helping to end the HIV epidemic. Just last week, we kicked off Pride Month by lighting the pink triangle atop of Twin Peaks. It is such an amazing sight. We did it to honor the legacy of the resilience the pink triangle has come to represent. And like the pink triangle, we gather here today to remember those we lost to AIDS through these vibrant quilt displays. While the AIDS Memorial quilt was born out of tragedy, each panel gives us a beautiful opportunity to pause and to appreciate the individual lives of this diverse community. And the AIDS Memorial Grove here in Golden Gate Park gives people from all over the world the solemn space to reflect and to remember their loved ones lost to this virus. These are sad, happy tears. How to say it? Cuckoo bananas. So important. Steve the world, Mullen. The world needs to see these lives. That John were lost. Anthony. And one of the people lost is my partner. Ken Albertson. And I made that panel for him. Bill Weigart. This is the first time I've ever seen it. Publicly. George Rodriguez. Jeffrey Caymans. So, Larry people can come see my Negri. partner, Kevin Lockwood. Vincent <laughs> J. Mutari, Esquire. Well, Right John now, I remember Sergeant. all the people that we've lost, Richard and all the men who mentored Nelson. me, and hearing their names Tony now. Perry. We've got so much emotion, but a lot Mark of pride. B. And Chip. I hope that Chip they're Pornoy. proud of me for being here and remembering them. San Francisco Junction. Well, I was a nurse at the time, kind of a baby uh, right. nurse, just taking care of people because we didn't know what else to do. There was no treatment, yeah. and that's how I got involved in hospice. And it was, like you said, people didn't live long. And horrific deaths and frankly the Reagan administration was totally ignoring us. All my friends were dying. The government did nothing. Our churches kicked us out. Our families abandoned us. It seemed that the world was totally unwilling to look at what was going to happen. And the one on earth that had the power and the resources and the institutions and the knowledge to stop this failed. Failed utterly. Because it was a gay disease. And then when we found out other people were dying, they were black. And this combination of homophobia and racism prevented us from moving the world forward to confront the crisis. Now, 35 years later, we got 40 million dead and 40 million more living with the disease and still no cure and still, still no vaccine.
Thanks to this quilt. All that hate and fear and despair has been replaced. And for me, this quilt is the physical embodiment of love and courage and hope. As the director of the White House Office of National AIDS Policy, I believe the quilt can be both a tremendous teaching tool and a tool that helps us address the stigma of HIV, which still exists today. I am so pleased to hear about the Southern Initiative and the program that will bring the quilt to many of the same cities and areas the Biden administration prioritized through the National HIV AIDS Strategy and the Ending the HIV Epidemic in the United States. The Quilt Project will continue to be an important tool in educating people about HIV and dismantling stigma and discrimination. Today, we remember the names of those we lost and we give hope to those still living with HIV. The quilt remains a powerful symbol of hope, remembrance, and action by pulling the thread from one generation to the next. The quilt is prepared to take on this beauty and to take this work to communities where its stories can help open hearts and minds and shine a spotlight on the health inequities and the stigma many still today live under.